Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Callum and I'm a QA tester. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the two various different pathways that you might be taking, um, or possibly three, if you wanna become a software tester, a QA tester in 2023. First off though, what is QA? Um, well, very quickly, for those of you that don't know, QA is the process of going through software and testing it to make sure that it's in a releasable state to customers. It's perhaps a way for maybe more non-technical people to get into the technology industry. And in my last video titled, what is QA or what is software testing? I actually described it as a hidden job of sorts. It's kind of one of those jobs that you hear about once you're in the industry, but you never knew really existed outside of that. Anyway, we won't be covering that in this video. If you do want to find more about that after, take a look down below. I'll link it in the description. Uh, it's a video titled, what is QA or quality assurance and software testing, and it will walk you through exactly what it is a software tester does. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay, um, so first off, I think in order to answer the question, how do you become a software tester in 2023? I think maybe I should start by explaining how I became a software tester and see if it's akin to you. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the way I became a software tester was probably not that common. I myself didn't go to university and I spent about nine months uh, job searching for QA. I'd always been interested in technology when I was at school. I kind of liked learning about it, uh, liked the programming side of things, and so I dabbled a tiny bit in programming. Now the first pathway that I'm actually going to cover is actually the university route, which is the path that I didn't do. So if you didn't go to university and you're looking to get into QA, keep watching this video as I'll explain later on. University. Okay, so I didn't do this myself, but I know a lot of friends that are doing comp sci at the moment as a degree and then studying at university. What's gonna be really important if you're at university is the networking events. Uh, if you can do any extracurricular stuff within the university, sometimes they make up talks um, on different lectures, have guest speakers, that sort of stuff. If you can attend those and start to get to know the companies that work within this space, within the city, then you might be able to start networking and getting to know them a little bit better. So that when your degree ends, you have a few contacts that you can chase up and possibly ask if there are jobs going. Now, not all university courses offer this, but if you're doing comp sci, maybe the majority of places will offer a year in industry. Before having thinking about going to university, this was always my plan to do the year in industry to go away somewhere, maybe not even in your own country, and to look at what life is like around the globe in your industry. And then after I presume, as many of my friends are doing now in their final year, uh, they're kind of getting to the point where they're doing their final dissertation, their final exams, and from that year in industry, they would have gained a few contacts of the companies, and if they've been lucky, done a placement with them. So this is most likely the first company that you can call upon after having completed your degree. Once you're at university, you will probably want to look at still doing like programming languages and getting involved with that side of sort of things. The more technical skills you have, probably the better. Um, although I completely feel that getting into QA testing, you don't have to be technical at all. There are roles for manual testers as such, where very little technical expertise and technical skill on programming languages is actually needed. So looking at the second possible path, which is the non, kind of, untraditional route which I took which was not going to university. Definitely the first thing you want to do is start developing your skills whether that be on your own or potentially another way looking through as I did a boot camp. There are some courses out there on QA testing and some exams that you can take that are just professional qualifications but I'd also recommend maybe deep diving if you can into the more technical stuff like programming languages and doing a web-based development bootcamp. This is because as you haven't got a degree yet, you might be just at that slight disadvantage where having a degree might give the employer a bit more confidence that they know the foundational knowledge required. Again, once you're at boot camps, network as much as you can. Even if it's not a boot camp in person, there are still online courses and online content providers such as Udemy, which I also highly recommend. I'll also make sure to put links down in the description for some of the QA testing, software testing, uh, qualifications and exams that you can start preparing to take. And the third and final route is if you're currently working within an industry that isn't technology, then it kind of depends on your background, whether you have a technical background or not, whether you are in software development, as in that case, 
it's going to be really easy to transfer. Uh, well, I say easy, it might still be hard, but it'll be easier to transfer into QA. If you are an unrelated industry though, I'd highly advise looking at the points that are raised in the non-university path. Again, like a lot of self-learning and building up with boot camps, even if you might have to pay a small fee for that, I think it's definitely worth it. And then to tie it back all together, for all three of those paths, once you've started gaining the skills and you've got the knowledge, start looking on websites like Indeed, and jobs fairs and even by word of mouth from people that you know where jobs might be going. It personally took me nine months of job searching to finally find my first job in QA. I left that a little bit after a year and a bit of doing that and I'm now in another job still doing QA that I've just started. Even if you're applying and you're not getting any responses, it can be really sad and difficult to handle the rejection. Just try to keep going. Like I personally know how difficult and frustrating it is uh, when you're putting out these applications and it seems like no one wants you. If you keep going, keep applying, I'm an avid believer that you will eventually get somewhere and you will be able to find your first job as a QA. Throughout this process, you have to try and remember to keep being positive and to take breaks when necessary. Don't burn yourself out and make sure you keep practicing those core skills. So guys, I hope that was useful and I hope you gained a few tips from the video, learning how you can possibly become a software tester. I've put some useful links below, so do check out that content. And again, if you didn't catch my name, my name's Callum, I'm a software tester, and I'm living proof that even if you didn't go to university and you took like a less traditional route, that you can still make it into technology. Thank you so much for watching. I'll try to be putting out videos more and more often. Take a look back at a few of my videos in my channel, see what you think of them, leave a comment, and from wherever you are, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice rest of the day, and I'll see you in the next video.